Today's February 13th, 2019, and this is episode 43 of Plane Savers. Good morning, folks. That is a twin otter on skis. Oh, no, no skis, just twin otter on uh, wheels, enhancing the audio today. Welcome to the show. It's a beautiful day. It is minus 23 degrees Celsius, which is minus 9 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you know, the cold snap is broke. Uh, we do have some wind, so it's about a minus 36 degrees Celsius with the wind chill right now, but I'll take it. I'll take it. It's clear. It's perfect for Aurora viewing. Everything's going good today. Uh, going back inside here. Let's just go inside. <laughs> um, okay, so today I got some crazy stuff today. Um, we're going to head off to Germany where we're going to see a plane that has been saved uh, and they're making a donation to the cause. So I'm going to uh, show you guys that right away. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about what the heck does the DC-3 have to do with the CF-104 Starfighter. I'm going to have a little Starfighter stuff for you today. Uh, but right now, let's. Uh, I'm going to head inside and I'm going to send you to Germany to meet my friend Marcus. So buckle in and we'll see you soon. Mikey, this is Markus from Safe Adorni Project in Paderborn, Germany. You know this aircraft behind me, Adorni 27 serial number 471. We actually visited her with Stella during the restoration project. We are now finished. The plane is certified to fly and uh, we're looking forward now to see your project getting ready to get airborne. Uh, it's a similar project because uh, one crazy guy was uh, having an idea to bring a beauty back to the air, a former owner that uh, was helping in this progress, and of course the family standing behind, great friends and uh, fans. And so it's similar, the projects of Adorni and, and your DC-3. So we were thinking about how can we help in this progress. For sure, all of the Safe Adorni project would like to come to you and, and work on the aircraft, but it's too far away. Luckily, we got a good project with the company Special Hobby and um, Scale Art. They reproduced our aircrafts here as a limited edition, as model kit. So we want to share the first five models with you. You can sell them on wherever you want to make money for your DC-3 project. And so we like to help you in, in your progress. Uh, for those who don't know, the aircraft behind me, it's a Dornier 27. Actually, it was designed in Spain as a replacement for the Fiesle Stork aircraft um, by the company Dornier. So they produced two prototypes, Do 25, and the serial production aircraft Do 27, which became also the first serial produced aircraft in Germany after World War II. Behind me, serial number 471 was built in 1960, then started her life with the um, LTG-61 in Pensing, transport unit. Sadly, crash landed in 61 as well and um, was rebuilt by Dornier. Then joined the tactical wing of uh, Leon Versuchsschwarm 4G-91 at the Fighter Weapon School 50 at Fürstenfeldbruck. It was the only DO-27 that was used in this squadron for evaluating the potential of a G91 fighter jet and to see if this plane could land on grass strips, fields and roads. In 1970 she was withdrawn from use, sent to a private owner, becoming her current call sign Delta Echo Kilo Foxtrot Golf and was soon joined the club at Kiel at the Baltic Sea, a skydive Kiel for skydive operation up to 2013, when she was put into storage with a friend of mine. In 2015, we took over the aircraft, made it ferryable again, flew her to Paderborn, made a full restoration. And while we were thinking about what to do with the paint scheme, we had the King of Spain, Felipe, visiting Paderborn, who himself is an aviator as well. and. Uh, also knows a lot about the DO-27 from his military career and we decided at that moment there was no DO-27 flying in Spanish original colors and uh, we asked for permission to do so and now our airplane replicates U-951, the first DO-27 in service with the Spanish Air Force. 
She will tour, of course, whole Germany and Europe and, of course, Spain to tell the story about this unique aircraft itself, which has a minimum speed of 22 knots, a maximum speed of 180 knots, cruise speed of 105 knots, can take six passengers, can take off and land from any football field. It's a very good short take off and landing aircraft. And um, we want to keep this history alive and that's the same what you do. So good luck for your project and many happy landings. Well, Marcus, that's awesome. Stella and I both uh, have a huge big thank you to send off to you. I can't uh, thank you for the models. Uh, so huge thank you to also to the whole Quarks crew. Uh, in Peterborn, Peterborn? Paderborn. Paderborn uh, Germany. Uh, Stella and I went and visited. Uh, it's an amazing place. They have what, almost 40 aircraft. All crazy stuff. Definitely check it out if you're in Pader Paderborn? Paderborn? Paderborn, Germany, or any place in Germany. Go check out uh, Quartz Aviation. And what Marcus said, he's donating uh, a couple of the models uh, for us, the, the Journey models. Uh, so I want to show you, I want to highlight another YouTube channel right now. It, this guy is insane. It's my new favorite YouTube channel about building models. I'm going to show you the model that Marcus is donating. So Tom has been very gracious enough to uh, let me use some of his footage from his uh, awesome video. And trust me folks, this is just the highlights. You have to check out the video for yourself. I'm going to link the description to Tom's uh, YouTube channel in the comments. Uh, this is just amazing. And it's not just this airplane. He does lots. But uh, yeah, if we, uh, we're going to put this airplane on eBay. Uh, so you have a chance to make one yourself. And all the money is going to go towards our airplane. And I'm just going to shut up and let you watch this. This is so, so cool. Wasn't that amazing, folks? This guy is not only building the models and repainting the models and making new parts, he's making stop motion video. It just blows my mind. So uh, I wanna thank Marcus again and again and again. Uh, we're gonna be throwing up one of the Dornier models on eBay right now. I'm gonna throw up a picture. There's gonna be a link in the bio for Tom's YouTube page about how he builds all these models. It's insane. Uh, and there's also gonna be uh, links to Save a Dornier on uh, on facebook so check those guys out for supporting and uh, let's head over and check out the cf-104 starfighter and what that has to do with dc3s do you know i don't know well even stella's gonna learn on this one folks well mikey i did promise you to send some uh, f-104 footage we're looking at f-104 starfighter located here at the Canadian or the alberta air force museum here in calgary here i'll give you a quick look here at the wing side of this guy okay they're sharp. Uh, you can see there are guards on the wing right now. And the purpose of that is so people don't cut themselves. And contrary to popular belief, when we worked on them, no, we did not sharpen them up. was because this airplane can go fast. Now, the aircraft is quite capable of flying two times the speed of sound. That's Mach 2. Another interesting uh, 104 point is if you look at the tires on here, they're pretty thin. These are high pressure tires. They would last oh, 8 to 10 landings, depending on uh, how fast the aircraft was or how you know how good the runways were. I've seen them wear out in as little as one, la uh, one landing. Now there are some lights on in the cockpit. They're not normally there. They're just there so it's not so dark so people can see all the things that are going on in there. This aircraft is in uh, relatively great shape. It's uh, uh, been well restored. Uh, after uh, Denmark finished flying with it, apparently it was bought by an American. It somehow made its way to Canada. Uh, and from there, it was uh, purchased, restored here in Alberta. Their job was to basically fly low. 
and fast. And say the aircraft is good for twice the speed of sound. Actually, for its day, the Starfighter was a very, very advanced aircraft. And I got a good question for you. What has an F-104 Starfighter got in common with a C-47 Dakota? Well, there were three uh, C-47 Dakotas in the uh, Canadian Air Force that had F-104 noses on them and were equipped with the NASA Raider. They were used for training for F-104 pilots in the early part of their training. Uh, the three aircraft were built were all named. One was uh, Pinocchio, one was called Dolly's Folly, and the last one was Woody Woodpecker. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, Woody Woodpecker crashed sometime in the late 60s, and Pinocchio and Dolly's Follies uh, were, flew through to the end of the uh, Dakota use in the RCAF. And uh, right now, Pinocchio is located at uh, Canadian Forces Base Cold Lake as a static display. So you can see it with the Starfighter nose on it. Okay, have a good day. Wow, that was so awesome. So we had uh, Marcus in Germany donate a model for us. He's actually saved that airplane. So he's a plane saver. He's already done it. Uh, but so thank you for donating that. The proceeds going towards our D-Day machine. Uh, thank you for Phil for giving us the walk around of, of his old CF-104 Starfighter that they used to work on. Uh, amazing, amazing hands-on history there. Uh, a lot of people in today's episode, that's what I like. Uh, I hate to leave you on a cliffhanger, but we have received new 8mm footage and this stuff will blow you away. It is, I don't want to ruin it. So next episode, new footage, I'm super excited. Insane, but it's very particular. We found like this is the holy grail of 8mm footage and it has to do with what we're doing, of course. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So guys, don't forget it's Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, so having a good time. We'll see you in the next one. Stay warm and we'll be seeing you very, very soon. Goodbye.